Hi and welcome back to the concluding part of the Star Trek Sick Bay build. I'll put a link to part one in the description. In fact, there'll be a link coming up in the top corner now as well. And if you want to see the actual main video demonstrating this, then that'll be a link in the description below as well. So in this episode, well, in the last episode, when we left off, we'd fitted the display and the heart stroke oxygen sensor. And just as a reminder, I'll be referring during this video to test code for testing certain parts of the system. They're available on my website in the part two article. There'll be a link down below. And also in the second part, there will be the full source code in the article. Again, the link is going to be down below. In this episode, we're going to start off by doing the temperature sensors. And first of all, it takes two temperature sensors. So let's start by wiring up number one. So there you go, that's the first temperature sensor wiring in according to the circuit diagram. We've got the positive connected to the positive and the negative connected to the ground rail. The middle pin is the data and that's going to go all the way back here to pin 6. And also on that pin, if you look, let's pull these two ways back. It goes to pin 6 of the Arduino, but it's essential that you put in this 4K7 resistor going from there to the plus supply voltage. Without it, you're not going to get any data back from this. So let's load up the test code again from my website and we'll see a display. Okay, so 26 degrees, quite warm today in the UK. That is good for the UK, by the way. Put my finger on and we should see that rise quite rapidly. It will not get to 37 degrees body temperature because skin temperature is not the same as your internal core temperature. Your internal core temperature is around about 36 degrees to 37.8 ish is an acceptable one or something like that. It'll top out about 30 to 31. So my code in the actual Star Trek display makes use of uh, a research paper done by Loughborough University, which I have mentioned in the demo vi video and possibly other video as well. Makes use of that to actually be able to calculate from your skin temperature the core temperature. And for that, it requires two temperature sensors, one measuring your skin temperature and one measuring the environment. And that's what we'll do next. We'll now connect up another temperature sensor, which we'll put down here near the heartbeat sensor so that we can put our fingers on both that and that at the same time. And this one will become our environmental sensor. Let's move on to that. Okay, so the second sensor has been wired in down here. And you can see you've just connected the positive to the positive rail and the negative to the ground rail. And the middle pin, the data, is going all the way along here to the very same 4K7 resistor that this previous sensor was connected up to here. Don't need to have an extra one. As many of these temperature sensors can go to this one 4K7 as you need to. So let's power it up. I've already put some loading, some sample code. It's again on my website, all the links below, to give this a brief test. Let's just connect up some juice. Get in there. And we should see two readings. Or maybe no readings at all. As my battery pack just died. Oh, just a bit of a dodgy connection. Let's just power that up. Are we going to live? Or are we just going to not do anything? I think my rechargeable battery pack is on a low voltage. So, I'll connect up to the computer so I might just hear a little bit of a beep. And I'm around myself with that battery pack. Needs charging, that's better. Okay, so yeah, we've got sensor zero and sensor one. It's picked up two sensors, and you can see the readings are within about half a degree or so of each other. Right, so I'll put my finger on one, and you'll see one of them change. Let's try that one. And we can see sensor zero is rising, which shows that that is sensor zero. Let's put my finger on this one, and we should see sensor one rise. There it goes. So both sensors are working fine. That's it for the temperature sensors, all working great. We'll now move on to generating that heartbeat sound. 
So next thing is the MP3 player to play the heartbeat. We'll need this and a suitable speaker which we've got there. These MP3 players connect directly to these speakers, no audio amplifier required. And they just take a little SD card, you just populate them with MP3 uh, songs, sounds, files, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And you can control it via these pins to play whatever is on there. We do it in a very simple fashion because we're only putting one MP3 sound on there. So let's get on with that and wire it up. So that's it, all connected up. Very simply, we've got two, a speaker, two speaker wires, which actually go to the top pin here and then the third pin down. So each of your two speaker wires, doesn't matter which one to which, but one goes to the top pin, one goes to the third pin down. And then on this middle pin, the second pin down, it just goes to ground. So second pin down to ground. This very bottom pin on this side goes to positive. And then if we come across here, that pin one, two, three, four from the top is connected to digital pin four of the Nano. So let's get an SD card, whack on the heartbeat sound, and let's see if that works. You get your SD card, mini SD card. I use an adapter for my computer, you might have a little box, pop into your computer and copy the heartbeat sound which you'll get off my website. Okay, so this is the small SD card I've put, just put in. As you can see, I've used this in the camera at some point, it's got a little camera folder. You can delete everything off here. Uh, but if you leave something on, as long as it's not an MP3 file, doesn't seem to cause a problem. So I'm going to drag my heartbeat sound in. As long as that's the only MP3 sound on there, you're going to be okay. It'll just pick it up and play it. And that's it. Let's eject that out. So we've got our little SD card. Just out of frame then for a second. I'm going to pop that into the MP3 player. In you go, your little fella. Get in. And again, go to my website. You'll find some test code that just tests this MP3 player on its own as an isolated unit. So if you've wired it up, then all should be okay. So we'll switch that on. And there it is, working perfectly. I think I've set that to about 45 beats per minute, something like that, can't remember. So let's move on to the last component, the tiny push switch. Okay, so the switch is in place, just two wires come off it, one going to the ground, and one going to digital pin three of the Nano. I've put the test software on from the web page. So for a brief, simple test, all it does is displays the current status of the button. So if I press it, lo and behold, pressed and not pressed. Just as a, at least you know the button's working properly because if you orientate it wrong, as in 90 degrees that way, you'll not get the right result. There are markings on bottom of these type of buttons to show you how to orientate it. Not always straightforward, but doing the simple test will mean that you definitely know whether it's working when you press it or not. And so now everything's together. We'll just upload the actual proper full code again and it should all work. I'll do that and we'll come back. So let's plug it in, it will work, it will work. I've already uploaded it, I know it's gonna work. So it's going through the boot sequence, temperature, yeah, firms on both sensors, been there, done that, come on, move on. Auction and pull sensor, yeah, firms if yeah, yeah, firms if yeah. Starting up, and come on, hit it. There we go. And as the current pulse level always starts at high current level, not easy for me to say, Always starts at a high pulse level, a default setting in the actual code, just so you can check everything's working. And it goes back down to zero, obviously, because my fingers are on it. So, and today is a particularly warm day, so the def even the temperature without my finger on it is recording a reasonable uh, temperature there. Uh, in the UK today, as I shoot this, goodness knows when you'll be watching this, could be over the middle of the winter, but it's one of the hottest days we have ever had on record. So let's just put my fingers on there if I can, left-handed this time rather than my usual right. And we'll see what the results are. Uh, 
That's okay. Okay, so that's it. Wraps it up. Every little stage done in small detail for you. Should work. Over the next, I don't know, few weeks, few months, whenever I feel like doing it, and I will be improving this by adding in some. I did actually want some other sounds in there, such as when it did go. Somebody suggested on this one, one of the comments as well, that when the heartbeat fell to zero, when, the, when, the, when the, all the results went down to zero, that actually he played something like, you know, he's dead, Jim. Which actually, yeah, I wanted to do. But I was really short space. I'm, I've got about 2% of actual program space left on this. And that was after really refining the code. The actual code to play different MP3s on these isn't massive. I think it will fit. But at the time, just like I was so tight on space. I went for a very simple solution where I just toggle a wire and it plays the one single MP3 on there. So yeah, so I'm probably going to do that. Maybe something else as well, not sure. But I'll be coming back to this again in the future. Hope you've enjoyed this series. It's been one of the most popular ones I've done. I've really enjoyed building this. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to your new subscribers as well. Thank you for staying with me as well. Especially when I've been through the times that I've had to put the captions on. I've had no voice. It's not been as easy to watch. It's not as been easy for me to actually do the videos. So I really do appreciate you watching and subscribing and patronising me on Patreon if you want to or even patronising me in the comments if you want to really thankful so that's it for now thanks very much again catch you next time